Listen up or run for cover. Dropping knowledge from the people who have it to the people who need it. The, the, the real Robin Bradley Bombs. is dropping. What it is, Brad Lee back again with another episode of Dropping Bombs. Today in the studio, folks, I got Joe Vargas. You probably know him better as At Hustler. CBD veteran here in Las Vegas, Nevada. CBDoil.com, that's you. That is me. Folks, you guys probably seen him or you're following him on social media. He's running around showing people how to get it done. Navy veteran. Yes, sir. When did you get out of the Navy? Got out in 2006. 2006. Started to the nineteen ninety eight, so I did a six year or no eight year term. Now you ever hear dropping bombs full episode? Not a f- I've, I've, a lot of clips. People always come on, so they so they like listen to a few. Mm-hmm. But like if you listen to a full episode, we're just shooting the shit, son. That's all we doing. Yes, you got a lot of one liners, so I'm ready for it. Now, now, <laughs> now you started again. You ain't always had dough, no, right? No, and and who knows how much you got now? I mean, you got enough to flaunt. That's for damn sure. But what is enough? Do we got billions? You ain't a billionaire, are you? No, I'm not a billionaire. I'm not. Even, I'm not even a nine figure guy. Not yet. Not yet. You'll get there. But you'll I especially mean, I, get there in this industry because, dude, you you popped in the CBD industry, and I think it's I think it's embryonic. Yeah, like, I mean, it's not I, even started yet. Right, right. It's definitely the beginning. Um, I started in 2015 before in January 2015 before anybody even really knew what CBD was. Hey, I've got a CBD idea that if I told you. You would want to do it, and it would make millions. And I'm talking about millions. <laughs> well, you got to do the pinky. Well, millions. no, that's billions now. Oh, <laughs> but dude, I got a CBD idea mm-hmm. that if I if I did it, I would make millions almost overnight, and I wouldn't even have to touch any CBD. Okay, that's the crazy part. Okay, I like it. Yeah, because it wouldn't be I wouldn't be selling CBD. I'd be selling software. Mm. But the people that use my software would be selling CBD and a whole lot of it. I like it. Want me to tell you the idea? I do. How do we make a deal? Because you'll execute, motherfucker. <laughs> Hold on. Sign now, it. We'll do but, an NDA right well, now. Well, we have to. And, and maybe I'll trust you. You know why? Because I seen you get all pissed at, I forget who was fucking copying who and something. And you had to step in and say, you motherfuckers. What were they copying? Oh, Somebody I mean, was copying. Can I, be, can I be transparent? Well, that's the only way to be, isn't it? Yes. Who was um, it? So I forget who it was, but I remember because I follow you on social media. Long, I mean, it was recent too. It was like last yeah. week. Uh, so basically, Josh Snow has snow teeth whitening. Oh yeah, oh yeah, he came in here. And then Michael, My, uh, what's his name? Michael from Fit T, and uh, I don't know his last name. But the guy that created Fit T, that we all know, who they blew up on social media. Um, they started, you know, the whole like uh, social celebs. social media influencer promoting and stuff like that, yeah. like many years ago. Um, he teamed up with Chris Delgado, which Chris used to work for Grant Cardone, and that tries to claim that he's the one that fills all the seats in Grant Cardone's uh, arenas and wherever else that he does. Does he claim that? He, that's his claim to fame. Dude, he's going to be lying. He's going to be lying. See, I know Grant, dog. I, I Want know. Want me FaceTime his ass? Do it. Do it Grant right Cardone, Do it right I now. promise you, probably did use Chris because Grant used a lot of people. But dude, it's a whole. thing. He was a marketing director. Know, but it's like, a whole thing. He has, that a, sells he has staff. Yeah, there's sales people on the phone. There's ad. There's there's a half million in ad spend. Mm-hmm. There's media buying. There's fucking yeah. all kinds of shit. So I don't think. I mean, well, if, it's he, like the, if he's it, saying he is the reason all those seats were filled, I can tell you he is full is of lying. shit. He specifically, well, he's full of shit, he, or he's full of himself. Dude, he, I, I can call him too, by the way, because I know that dude from somewhere, Chris. I he, know them all. That's he what's flew weird. to Vegas to come talk to me, to come sell me on an idea of like pitching. Chris did? So he wanted me to do an event, and he wanted to lead it. And he sold me on the idea that <clears throat> Grant Cardone on the Miami event, the one that my assistant Kevin, I uh, think that you got him the tickets, didn't you say? I, that yeah. was Miami? First one? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah like 35,000 people there. So Chris said that. No, that was another one. So Chris. I, I only, I, I gave him a ticket. Two. Yeah, it was two. Yeah, so. That last one was three. Okay, so Chris but dude, but Chris dude, said that he sold 10,000. Grant Cardone sent, uh, sold 10,000 tickets. And then with all the efforts of Chris, he sold the rest up to 35,000 seats in the stadium. 
I know, but, but dude, he's I, a tell, mar- I tell my wife I got an eight incher when it's probably really only seven. <laughs> Who cares, dude? No, he but exaggerates. He, was, he was a marketing director. Yeah, but that's just exaggeration. He was hired to like do Who billboards. Cares? So he's exaggerating, dude. right? But big that's deal. that's it is a big but, deal. But, it's but, not cool. but now he's like swooping in on somebody's patent or something. Yeah, so they came at the so the, all of that basically. Long story short, was uh, they came out with uh, I won't plug them. They came out with a teeth whitening kit that and oh, that, it's jo- like, that Josh has. Yeah, so it's cool. Like it's competition, right? It's like you coming out with a CBD product, and then that's fine. How can oh, we work? I'm coming out with one. The how, question is, is with how, or without you? <laughs> well, how I, do, want, I want it to be with. Aren't how, you the dawn of CBD? You're the dawn, bro. That's what the media says. And besides that, dude, like you've been fucking with it almost since it started. It's new, yeah. so you probably yeah. know way more. That's like you trying to get into VT business without me like dude i'll fuck you up in the vt but it's not you'd fuck me up in the cbd business so if you want to get somebody to go into business you go find mm -hmm. someone in that business already successful say what are you doing what are you doing and you partner with them i think that's the best way to do it so if i was going to do it Mm -hmm. i'd go to snow and say hey i got an idea on 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 teeth whitening and here's what i'm going to do and if he said go fuck yourself well then i'd compete with him right but if he said Oh, that's a fucking great idea. Let's partner. Well, dude, I'd go with Snow. Why? He's already got all the distribution. He's already got all the bullshit figured out. And they're all in the same circle. They're all off, like, I thought they were friends, but um, it's cool to do the competition thing. But they came out and when they built the website, they actually copied and pasted word for word things that were on Snow Snow Teeth Whitening's website. So they literally just yeah, literally jacked his deal. Yeah. So I that's a little harsh. So that, for me, that hurt. So for me, I'm not. I'm not a. I don't. I'm, I'm not the bullshit police, and I try not to uh, call people out directly on right. purpose all the time. But Michael from Fit T, um, I offered him a, a very small percentage to be on the advisory board for CBDOil.com about a couple months ago, and he kind of blew me off about it, and I felt disrespected, and uh, that he did that, and um, and so when I saw that he was copying Josh, and then with Chris, and I already knew that Chris is full of shit, and mind you, I never even. I never uh, called the bullshit out uh, for on Chris. I just let it go. And um, when I saw that they were doing that, I was like, no, fuck this. That That's fucked up. So I took Josh aside and, and was like, uh, do you know Chris Josh? Delgado? Yeah. To Chris Delgado, you're full of shit. Like, and I, and then everybody in my, was in my DMs like, that's his claim to fame. I didn't know that. And like, did he, he really didn't do that. I'm like, he was an employee. Well, Grant didn't really jump out of a motherfucking airplane either. Just so y'all know. I hate to burst everyone's bubble. Yeah, you said it. I heard about that. I know I said it. And it's like, I can't believe everyone tried to fucking fall for it. Like, dude, I love old Grant and everything, but dude, he ain't a motherfucking skydiver. Well, I think the the wedding ring was the the giveaway. The wedding ring, that's just proof. The the fact is, is you have to have like fucking a hundred jumps tandem Mm -hmm. to fucking jump alone once. Right. And you wouldn't be allowed to jump in the fucking city Mm -hmm. into a fucking stadium with fucking cranes and shit around. Right. You got to be like a highly skilled professional skydiver to do that Mm -hmm. and licensed to do so. Yeah. Now, Grant's not a professional skydiver. How do I know? Because I motherfucking know him, dude. I've known him (laughs) for 10 years. Like I fucking, when I met Grant, he was training car salesmen around the country. Mm Mm-hmm. So that's what he was doing. And I, and I mean, I've known him since. Like, I knew him way before 10X and all that bullshit. And he was on light speed too before, right? He still is. Oh, is he? Yeah. He took he took a few uh, cheap videos and stuck them on Kajabi for what he calls marketing. Mm-hmm. But it's mainly because, you know, he didn't really want to pay the, the VIG on light speed. See, light speed's got a little VIG attached to it. Mm-hmm. Why? Well, because I show you how to do it. Like, I showed him how to build it up. And now he's just taking a few vids off to uh, another one to really just drive people to his main one right the main one is light speed so he's got, got two it. yeah right on so so most most um people heard about you fucking with bilzerian too what was that about um what's the, the short story or long story well i mean i know that he's got ignite which is a fucking so massive that's, cbd uh, brand yeah, but him being the competitor is not the issue. So what? That's what I'm trying to get to. It's so what happened? Some at some point people, in time, you got pissed at him and said, "You're a fucking asshole." Okay, so I think a lot of people think that, but um, so a couple of years ago, before he started Ignite, we were on Twitter and he posted this picture of Alpha CBD, and, I, and to this day, I've never seen that before, up in, except for that one time. He posted a promo for Alpha CBD and said, "This is the CBD that's helping this kid." That's passing away with cancer and after his treatments well that was a lie um 
it was a friend of mine's company that was helping them with the CBD and through his radiation treatments and stuff like that. So Dan was taking away from the spotlight from the people that, I mean, it wasn't even my medicine. It was someone else's. And the actual behind the scenes truth was it was my friend's company giving him the CBD, helping him with the, re- the treatments. Um, he ended up passing away eventually, but um, Dan was paying for the medical bills behind the scenes and, and not doing PR for it. Like he was just giving the guy and the family money. And um, so he posts this promotion on Twitter about this is the CBD that's helping this kid. And I called him out and said, no, it's not. I said, and I told, and I basically said, that is not your CBD. I don't remember word for word, but it was like, not your CDB. You're full of shit. Um, I don't know what you're doing to help this kid, but it's definitely not that. And it's not cool what you're doing. Well, he ended up going back, contacting the father, which is they lived in Hawaii. And the father is grieving at this time, right? The kid passed away. And Dan's more upset that the dad would even say anything to anybody. Because I don't know if Dan really knew who I was at the time. This is before his Ignite days. And so I, I then tweeted him again about him calling the dad. So I'm sure he's like, who the fuck is this guy? Like, how does he even know this, right? He, probably, he didn't say that publicly, but I don't think he knew anything about me before this all started. So at that point, I was like, you know what? Fuck that guy. Uh, it's it's below, uh, to me, it's like below the belt, below the belt piece of shit type of stuff to like use a child to, for your own benefit. And, and then recently the stuff that you saw, um, I posted a meme and the meme was like one side was like a guy that looks exactly like him with no hair on his face. Did you see that? Mm-hmm. And then the right side is like him with hair. It's him with hair. Dude, that meme bothers him so much because the guy that made that meme apparently coming to find out was like Dan was in his DMs. Like, you, you think you're fucking funny, you meme loser and talking shit to this guy. So he doesn't really like that meme. Oh, it's a funny meme. Um, it is hilarious. But, but it's not even the same person. <laughs> no, it? it's not. It's but, not. But what's it funny, really what, does look it like do, him. It does though. look like him, and it makes you think, ooh, he's like a <laughs> he's like an ugly twerp without his beard. <laughs> but but the, dude, if you could if you can if if a beard transforms that, like fucking everybody should have right. should have now, a beard. That's what the meme was about. It's like if you don't if you don't get laid, just grow a beard or something like that. That's funny. And then have that meme. And then so he got mad at me for the meme. And I don't think he put two and two to and the guy is like Whacked, wacky in his mind because his life and stuff like that and i don't think i don't know if he put two and two together i kind of his his response in, in the dm he, he dm'd me yeah his response to his dm like i was like does this guy even remember the twitter that that twitter dispute that we had about that yeah you posted it i heard it i heard him yelling at you so yeah so he <laughs> sends me a voice note and dm because i'm like because i reminded him about it i reminded him about the twitter instance and um and then he threatened me in a voice note, but then he unsended it. But luckily, I screen recorded it before he unsended it. And uh, I don't even know how you unsend shit. Oh, you just Instagram. tap it, and then it says click unsend, and you click it. Yeah, because I've seen a notice that says the person removed this, or you can't read this anymore. Yeah, so if you send a dick pic, then you just unsend it. Like once they're done looking at it. <laughs> Dude, what's crazy, and I don't know if it's like normal or not, but I have never. Send a chick a dick pic. Mm, yeah. I can't say the same. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know. I guess so, I should have. <laughs> I always just send I, them I think you're just saying that. No, I don't, we, I, don't, I, don't I don't need, they don't need a picture. All, I just all, give them the real we, deal. We've all been young before, though. It's like, that, yeah, dude, that when I was fucking 20, I was sending fucking dick pics, but there were no, there were no cell phones, dude. It was just delivering oh, yeah. the dick, the real thing, putting <laughs> it on in there. Not, not even, no, the don't beeper. even need, yeah. The exactly. beeper. <laughs> we beeped, we beeped each other. <laughs> Dude, I remember fucking when when I had two beepers. I thought I was cool. <laughs> Dude, beepers. So, How long you lived here? Um, all my life since I I, I moved out you here remember, from the Bay Area. You remember sixth JJ, grade. the king of beepers? Yeah, I do. I do. Yeah, I do. So, dude, you got CBD stores popping up all over Vegas. BuyLegalMeds.com. dot com. You, you can buy you can buy shit from that website no matter where you are, right? Yeah. Um, so I, when I started the company, I, I started a product called Cloud9 Syrup in my dad's kitchen. Is that the first product? Yeah. That's what got you into it? Mm-hmm. And um, I started that in June 2015. I got it in the industry in January 2015, but then I learned the industry, uh, retired my last industry, which was in the nightlife and entertainment me- in the media industry for 10 years. Mm-hmm. 
and um, had my going away party with little John and stuff like that, and then officially started the company and the product in June 2015. And then bilegalmeds.com was the site that I started out with. That's kind of like our hub. Um, and this blew up from there. I mean, um, and then now we have what seven seven leases signed, four open CBD dispensaries as bilegal meds um, in Vegas, and then our number are those franchises or they're not franchises. I'm going through the I'm going through a phase right now of like trying to talk to the right people to understand if I even want to franchise it or license it. Cause I don't know, I, I don't know the, I don't know all of the ups and, and downs of well, you, both. You want to, you want to sell to a bigger company. You want to go get 2 uh, billion from somebody else. Eventually. And, and yeah. Fuck off. Eventually I do. Yeah. Right away. But I, only have, possible. but I only have seven right now. So, I mean, I eventually want to be nationwide and I almost went public and then all of a sudden the, the market, luckily, um, we were updating our books and it took a couple months. And once we got all that complete, uh, the market in between that time was crashing for the CBD industry. Do you and know why? Kind of, um, I didn't really pay too much attention to. I don't know a lot of, about the stock market, but the guys that What's we were going to do. What's the stock market got to do with it? Because we were going to go public. I, I was going to take the oh, company so the, public. So the market fucked up. Cause, yeah. Because if you ask me, I see all these people getting into hemp growing because it's a sturdy crop. Oh, dude, the, and, the hemp. and it's legal now. So so all these farmers are switching to hemp. And when they whenever you have a uh, an overabundance of a product, the the, the market drops mm -hmm. yeah but the farmers are the farmers are having a hard time right now selling the crop like there's not a lot of processors out there so like everybody ran to f go grow hemp and now there's a ton of it and they're fucking they're fucked right now i can curse on this right yeah but that's but that's why that's why the market's down on it because that's why because like what's it called biomass biomass yeah. yeah like fuck if i if everybody's got biomass and it's all the same shit well mm -hmm. then Fuck, I, I ain't paying you as much. It's everywhere. Everybody, everybody's hitting me up to buy my shit, or buy their shit. So then the market obviously prices have to lower. But I, I hear it's still fucking high in demand, dude. You, you, you don't have. I mean, you're you popping up stores. Everybody's wanting CBD. No. Yeah, the products, yes, but um, we're talking about different we're farmers and extractors. Yeah, but it has and, to start with processors. The, has to start with the shit, doesn't it? Yeah, but there's just so many of like there's so many farmers and not enough processors processing it, and like you know. The pricing, the shit. That, I remember when I started, the pricing of a kilo of isolate um, was like eighty five hundred, nine thousand dollars a kilo, and it's all the way down to like thirty five hundred, three thousand now. If you know somebody, yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, if you know us, we sell it too. I sell just to anybody for that cheap. I sell mass amounts of. A lot of people don't know because I don't like actively promote it, but I sell lots of kilos of CBD. Can you produce? As far like as anything. What? Um, what like do you mean? manufacture? Yeah, you, we or are. Or do you use manufacturers. We are a manufacturer. I have a factory here in Las Vegas. See, dude, my idea is gonna make you fucking go, "Holy shit, you motherfucker!" <laughs> and you're gonna want to do it. I have a feeling it has to do with like CBD lube or something like nope, that. Nope. Nope. Okay. Nope. <laughs> nope. 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 <laughs> and it's ready to roll. All I gotta do is like kick it off. Okay. I need. I need one thing, and and that I was gonna talk to you about it. Remember, I texted you that one time. No. Dude, talking to you, you're like a celebrity. I can't even, you're like, all the celebrities I know, you can never, like, the conversations, like, one conversation one day, and then you got to follow up with them the next week, and then. Not me, dude. I ain't come no, on. I ain't nobody like you know. I guarantee you. I don't believe that. Dude, I'm telling you. You're just ask saying anybody. that for the podcast. Oh, fucking shit. Ask him. Ask him. Shit. Oh, Fit don't, Kevin, or whatever it's called. What's, don't put what's him your on name? Blast. Fit with Kevo. Yeah, Fit with Kevo. He knows. Yeah. He's been watching me for years. I'm the same dude. But I'll tell you, in a lot of cases, that is how they are. You know why, though? Mm -hmm. Because they're busy. They get hit up all day. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got a deal. Everybody can change their life. Everybody yeah. wants to get in on their fucking mailing list and their launches. And I mean, there's a whole freaking world, that whole world, dude. Mm -hmm. I call it the entrepreneur world. Mm -hmm. There's like a whole, and they're all the, uh, you know, the same, they all know each other, too. Yo, which is yeah. crazy. I was just talking to, you know, Bella Thorne? No. Bella? Um, Bella Thorne, yeah. Oh, Bella, no. Yeah, yeah, like twenty-two million followers on Instagram. Used wow. to be, where it be, used to be on Disney. What does she do? Actress. Um, yeah, but she's now doing like a lot of uh, independent like films, and I mean, she's a celebrity, and and she just lives as a celebrity and does endorsement deals. And, dude, I'm an old man, dude. I ain't I ain't in touch with all the fucking. Yeah, she's the, twenty something. Yeah, I ain't, I ain't in touch with all the fucking. What do you call them? Gen X Z or something. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, like I was talking to her the other night, and uh, the best time to talk to those type of people are at nighttime when like 
What do you mean, talk to them? You mean on the DM and shit? Of, no, on a text. I text a lot of them. What like for? Voice notes. They like and, CBD? Um, <clears throat> depending on who they are, but I'm friends with a lot of celebrities. A lot of, a lot of them do want to get in the CBD industry because it's, it's never really like me and you have known each other for a long time. It's been a very casual friendship. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, uh, and we're just like, Hey, what's up, dude? Like, how you been? Like, and then we'll talk shit here and there and maybe like drop some like comments on each other's stories or something like that. Right. Though That's a casual friendship to me. I like that. But a lot of celebrities, there's none of that. They, all they wanted, they just get to the point. Like, if, if we're friends, we're friends. If not, like, it's straight to business. And a lot of them, uh, there's always, like, a what's the benefit, right? They're just so busy, and they have their own, like, little niche of friendships. So, like, even, like, Ray Schmerd, which is, like, a rap group, I had to get straight to the point with them. Like, I want it, I want you to do CBD. Like, there's a CBD deals that, that or, like, introductions that I need to make for CBD, but it's always business. And then you have some that are just like like me, where I just like I enjoy genuine like conversations and friendships, and there's not the, nothing has to come out of it. Yeah, I'm more like that. However, I like when I when I do do business, mm -hmm. let's get straight to business. Right? Don't you like that? Yeah, for sure. Like it's the best that way. It's like yeah, I ain't using your fucking shit. Oh, okay, or fucking yeah, you know I'll give it to you for X, not back and forth, back and forth. I just like creating. I just like building a relationship though. A lot, well, a lot I of think, them just get to the point, and it's like well, you know. Well, you're going to be the one left standing because relationships are the new economy. If you value money over relationships, soon mm -hmm. you'll have neither. Right. It's true. You can write that shit down because mm -hmm. guess what? That's BL original. Mm -hmm. So CBD. Now, if I could, I'd buy CBDs.com, but I'm so <laughs> sure it's already taken. I think it is actually. Yeah, because dude, whoever owns CBDs, <laughs> that motherfucker is the wonder, coolest of them all. Like I'd rather have CBDs than CBD oil. Why? Because I'm a fucking jokester. You're going to make more money with CBD oil because that's what motherfuckers are going to be typing into fucking Google and your shit's going to pop up every time. But I'm going to get the motherfucking jokesters because they're going to type in CBDs nuts. I want, I suppose you could probably just keep doing an E and eventually get CBDs nuts. Once, but how many E's? No one's going to know that. Once we're done, though, I'm going to go buy the domain because it's available. CBDs <laughs> nuts. Jeff Celentano, have someone right now go go, go buy CBDsnuts.com. <laughs> Cause that's what's funny or no, just CBDs. Yeah. Dude, I got a nice, uh, you're going to love my idea. All I want is just a smidgen of it. You go do it all. <laughs> is it a product? You said it's a it's, product. It's a product that I'll give you and, and you'll just, again, you'll collaborate the idea and make it just a better one. And then yeah. when we launch it, we can launch it like this. And when we launch it, dude, I'll bet you in within three, Two months, it'll be a twenty million dollar company. No shit. <laughs> okay. And within a year, could be two hundred million. And and the goal would be to get the fuck rid of it. Like I just want a couple hundred million dollars. Okay. So if I connect with you on it, and you're like, okay, I'll do this with you. You're the fucking main dude in the fucking industry. I'm just giving you the concept, and when you see it, you're gonna go fuck. I go, why didn't think of that? <laughs> Everyone's gonna go, holy fuck. Why didn't I think of that? So it's not out yet. No one's done it. Nobody's done it. Nobody does it. Okay. And and what's funny, let's say me and you on this side of things, I make my own company and we do this mm -hmm. together over here. Right. Not do the, what you do on the other companies. That company right there would be worth twenty million within a couple months and two hundred within a year. And all I want to do is just after a year get my two hundred and I'll fucking give you your ten million. No, <laughs> no, hold on. With the way you operate, you I, I'll get twenty percent. No, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. <laughs> hey, we won't. I won't let money come between us, okay? Because it's too good of idea, and it's going to help too many people. Yeah. But the cool part is, is I won't even when I'm done, I won't even be in the CBD business. Right. Personally. Mm -hmm. I, people say, "Oh, you're a, you you sell CBD? You're getting shut." Nope. No, no, motherfucker. We don't do none of that, <laughs> and we don't. Right. Yeah. Our, this company won't sell CBD, but the people that do business with this company will sell a fuck ton. All right. Well, maybe, okay. So by the time you come on my podcast, Confessions of a Hustler, then we'll talk about the actual idea. Because we can't talk about it now because yeah, we not we steal the we, idea. Well, no, we won't talk about it now. <laughs> but as soon as these motherfucking microphones are off. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I've been forgetting to bomb, too. Joe's probably thinking, fuck, dude, I ain't getting no bombs. No, it's cool. I know, but everybody that comes on, it's funny now, because everybody that comes on, like, they want they want the bomb. And I'm like, dude, 
you got to say something that's fucking valuable that people need to listen to because we always get like into conversations and people forget we're just having a conversation. Yeah. But hey, we're also doing a podcast, so mm -hmm. it's literally people forget we're even doing a podcast a right. lot of times. Yeah. But I'm so I'm when I'm talking on a podcast, I don't know about yours. I'm talking to the listener. I'm talking to you on behalf and for the listener. Why? Because dude, they want to know, fuck, dude, how did Joe get started? Like, fucking tell me, like, what'd you do when when everybody was up your ass? And how'd you get the fucking first 10 grand? Or, you know. So as these listeners start r realizing, you didn't start with anything. No. Well, I mean, I'll be honest. So um when I got in, so I got out of the nightlife entertainment and media industry in Las Vegas that I was in for 10 years uh, in 2015. Um, I made a bunch of money from that. What's so, a bunch? A um, couple million. Uh, and <clears throat> so, I mean, I had my own concierge business. I had a party bus that attached to that. So I you had, were a hustler from all, yeah, from old school. Yeah, when I got out of the Navy, I had to. like When you're out of the Navy, fresh out of the Navy, no mm -hmm, money, right? Mm, yeah, for sure. I was driving a scooter, living in a weekly. And okay, like, so how, what, was the first, what was the first step up? Um, so I had an entertainment radio show in 2005. And did it so, make any money? No, but it, I mean, it depends on, okay, yes, it did. I know, but let's say you're no, on a scooter. It didn't. I can picture you, by the way, on a scooter, <laughs> right? Thanks. You know, well, it's always easier to look cool when you're fucking rich, huh? Right, yeah. Okay, when you mm -hmm. when when you got some money, dude, it's easy to look cool. But think back when we were fucking broke. Yeah. And then we thought we were cool, and in reality, we weren't fucking cool at all. Oh, no, yeah. But at the end of the day, I, I'm picturing you on a scooter, no money, fresh out the Navy. Yeah. Joe Vargas running around Vegas, right? Mm -hmm. What's the first thing you did to, to, to get I, you off a fucking scooter and start stepping up a little? I was uh, I was a promotions manager, so I. So you thought I need to promote nightclubs and parties? Yeah, because that's the people I, I was introduced to when I was doing my entertainment yeah. radio show. So nine times out of ten, to be good at that, you just have to know people and, and get good at building relationships. No, you have to be good at your job too. I was really Which is what I was really good at managing promoters and marketing. Which is. Getting, getting, the word getting out. managing a group of people that were able to get girls and people inside of a nightclub. That's powerful. That, again, nightclubs pay for that big time, don't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. So back in the day, uh, do you remember Empire Ballroom, like Utopia? A long, long time ago. Okay, so when I was in the Navy, I was I was like my last three in my eight years, I was a training officer for the Naval Reservist here at Nell Nellis Air Force Base, and we had a lot of time off. And I uh, started the entertainment radio show, started meeting people in the entertainment industry. And I threw a nightclub charity event on a night that Empire Ballroom was closed. And it was for Make-A-Wish Foundation. And I packed the place with like 3,000 people and I was like a nobody. And I had all these sponsors that they hated each other on it. Like it was like, everybody was like, how did you do this? And like, I basically caught the eye of a lot of people that were running the night nightclub scene back then. And um, started working for a guy named Tony Verdugo and contracted me out at Empire Ballroom. And that's where I started. And then I built my way up from that but that wasn't always like money made and like i would lose a contract or the nightclub would like c cancel the contract for whatever reason they had or and so i and i didn't want to get a job so i struggled and i lost my so the reason why i was driving uh, a scooter is because i lost my license i wasn't able to pay like we're talking like 10 years so like um getting out of the nightlife industry for like a very small period of time because I was like having a hard time with like adapting to like the hustle and always hustling and trying to get a contract and whatnot because I didn't want to, I didn't want a job. How'd you get a contract? How do you get contract? You go in and negotiate and with say who? this is go what in I, with who? Oh, like with like the director of mar marketing director of the nightclubs and stuff like that. And you go in and you want a contract to do what? Get paid if you put asses in their seats? Yeah, well, yeah, you get paid per person, per girl. You get paid more per girl, and then you really? get paid your per guy. That you're because they know if their bars filled with chicks, guys will come. Yeah, for sure. So uh, then I lost my license. You know, I invented the ladies' night. Oh yeah, nobody believes me when I say that, but it's the fucking truth. I believe you. It's the fucking truth, dude. <laughs> Long ass time ago, I said to somebody, we we're trying to figure out from how to fill the bar. Mm -hmm. And I, I said, everyone will come if there's chicks here, make it, uh, make it where the, there's, it's free for girls or like give them free drinks or something. And then this bar did ladies night, free drinks and, and ladies got in free. Mm -hmm. The fucking place was packed. And ever since then, in, in the whole town, I don't know, again, it may, someone may have done it in Amsterdam or something, but there was no such thing as ladies night. When I gave my buddy that idea mm -hmm. and fucking 
they did it from then on. Right. Yeah. So I may invent. I may have invented ladies' night. <laughs> 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 no, it's fucking funny. Um. So yeah. So I lost my license. Had to drive a scooter, and then I took a bus here and there. And um. Yeah. Then I was working for like a. But see, you didn't. You didn't. You didn't let a scooter be an excuse. No, but I had to hide it. Yeah, but a lot of a lot of people they want you know they I, I know people like yeah. they won't ride a scooter. They're fucking too good for a scooter, so they'll just be immobile. Guess what? I'll ride a fucking scooter. Yeah, and the I'll bus. walk and, and I was the, on bus. the bus. Yeah. Oh yeah, but some people won't do that, dude. They'll, but, they'll they'll say, and I didn't have a car, and that was the reason, and that's when I started to fucking drink, and you know, next thing you know, it's like they're just filled with excuses. Yeah, but the interesting part about the story too, though, is that being I, I was like already being talked about like in the media and like things what for from promoting yeah doing stuff like that i was doing in the industry would people say hey you see what joe vargas is doing over there at light nightclub yeah packing that fucker yeah or like preve nightclub and at then everybody Hollywood. was your buddy yes or no yeah so it, everybody wants to know the dude that gets you in all the cool places right my image was greater than my income so I had to maintain that image. So I couldn't let people know I was riding the bus and riding the scooter. And that was like in 2007. If you would have, if you mm -hmm. would have, mm -hmm. what what do you think would have happened? Um, what did happen? Well, yeah. No, it, some, something did happen. It's not well, what have. Ha what happened then? People close to me would like have a falling out with them. They knew my situation. And so they would go gossip on a, blossom, on a gossip blog and basically talk shit about me until like, and, t and tell the truth when I'm like just trying to maintain an image because the image is what brought in not only people coming in and spending money and, and spending ten thousand dollars on a VIP table, yeah, but also the girls and stuff like that. So when they when we had a falling out, they became the devil and like wanted to tell the world the real story and they would go on. But you just didn't have as much money as you claimed. Yeah. So what though? That was just that their would, way of attacking me. But if that if the, if that if let's say everyone knew that was the truth, yeah, no one would have booked tables with you anymore. Um, I, I just I think that if I'm upkeeping the truth and pretending to be something that I wasn't at the time, then it's like your reputation, I guess, is more like yeah, like why would if you had money in your hedge fund group, why would you come to me knowing I was riding a fucking scooter and living in a weekly? Well, were you looking for people to? give you huge dollars or rent no, no, tables no. no it was like i don't I, I dude if you called me right now and you, and i didn't know who you were yeah you said if you ever want to come into this motherfucking nightclub mm -hmm. you hook a brother up right and i'll hook you up dude i'd call you i don't give a fuck what you drive i don't even care like who cares if you're rich right now if i knew some bigger than life character that ran around the casinos mm -hmm. and you still the one that got me the tables. I still wouldn't give a fuck if you were rich. Right. I, I, mean, ju I just think, how's this motherfucker making all this money? He must be making a lot of money fucking right. booking tables. Right, right. It wasn't just the tables, though. It was booking the entire trip. But so, like, but, but you'd bring, like, what? A bunch of people in for a for a whole event? Like a whole coordinated tour thing? So you're talking two different things here. You're talking about, like, marketing and promotions and managing promoters is, like, bringing individuals in. Like, I used to walk into Preve and Planet Holly with my team with, like, 300 people at, at 11 o'clock and it was like a train inside planet hollywood of like girls and people and me and my team and then i became the manager at preve so i was now managing See, I, did, I didn't know you all these fucking years <laughs> See? it was an interesting time and then um yeah and then 2009 preve opened and that's kind of when things started like turning for me and started being more consistent and um and then all the, the individual teams that Preve had as the marketing and promotions teams like on the outside, I was doing such high volume numbers with my team that they're like, we want you to come in and work internally and manage the people that are doing what you're doing. And so I took that because it was a great deal. And, and then there was a big, uh, sh the, the club shut down and stuff like that. So what do you think happened to chaos here recently? Uh, I already know what happened to chaos. What happened? I'm not even in, in the industry anymore. And mind you, I used to I used to like own and operate the 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 most popular nightlife blog in the country. It was kingofnightclubs dot com. So my my job was to basically I became a journalist out of nowhere. Have you ever heard of the Dirty? That's the gossip website that 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 they used to like try to like beat me up on. Oh, they did. Mm -hmm. I know someone that I know someone well that just said that they know the owner of that, Nick Ritchie, but he sold it. Yeah, he sold it, but it's not even the. No one even cares anymore about the site. I haven't heard about it for a long time, but no. when I heard did hear about it, it was fucking big for a minute. Yeah, so I mean, 
And um, it's my most popular article on that website, <clears throat> 13 Signs She Might Be an Escort, was read like 17 million times around the world. And it was like a short, it was like the most random fucking article to go viral. Um, but I don't know, man, like all the nightclubs I would shut down, I was a person that broke the story. And that's, and I started building a relationship with Robin Leach. So I'm like, Robin Leach and I yeah. don't know why. <laughs> yeah. Hey, so tell me, why'd chaos shut down? Okay, so... Um, the money that they were spending. Uh, so there was something that happened with, I'm going to have to say allegedly, so I don't get sued. Um, but this is, this is the truth, but allegedly it's the truth. If that's proper to say not getting sued. Um, so this guy, Alex Cordova that worked at the win, because mind you, uh, what's the guy's name with the marsh marshmallow was at excess for a while. Well, at chaos open marshmallow went to chaos. They said they signed a deal. John gray, and Alex Cordova, they're friends. Like, how do we get Marshmallow from Excess over to Chaos? Um, and so word is on the street that they did it under the table deal. And that's why Alex Cordova got fired over at the win. Um, this is all recent. And then John Gray and his team got fired for not only um, spending more money than they were making and the budgets were, were too high for what they were making. Mm -hmm. um, they also found out about the under-the-table deals they were doing. This is all allegedly, by the way, wink, wink. And, allegedly? Uh, yeah. You're talking about John Gray. The Yeah, so John and He's Alex. like the GM over there. John and Alex allegedly um, did the side deals and this whole operation, this whole thing. They were just spending more money than... So chaos shut down instantly. Mm -hmm. Everybody's pissed. All the employees are like, what the fuck? Yeah, my my private security was a security guard there. And uh, he, he was telling me today because I'm hiring him for an event tonight. And um, he, was, he was saying that everybody there is getting fucked over. What um, What's John Gray doing? I don't know. I don't really know much about him. Doesn't he work I, there? Yeah, he did. Not anymore. Oh, they fired him? Yeah. And then I heard, also heard, uh, and I don't even know the dude, but I know I know his wife's well, I know his wife's sister. Who? John? I know John's ex-wife. Oh, okay. From what I hear, they're not together anymore. Oh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. What, I've, I've always known about Damn, it. Damn, it sounds like his him. life's unraveling is what I'm saying. Like, yeah. life's gone. It's like... Job's gone. What yeah. happened? Was he screwing people or no? Or allegedly? No, I, allegedly they're just doing under-the-table deals and spending way too much money, and, and they were fucking being greedy. Damn. That's too bad. Alle allegedly. Allegedly. Mm -hmm. All right, dude. So if, if, if all these people listening thought to themselves, hey, um, where do I go? Why would I want CBD? Mm -hmm. Here's what I've discovered. Right. The human body, I don't know if you're aware of this, has CBD receptors in it. Yeah. Do you understand that? Yep. What that means is you have CBD receptors in your body. If you don't get CBD, but you have CBD receptors, what do you think that means? I, I'm waiting for you to tell me. It means that you're malnourished mm -hmm. unless you take CBD. Okay, so I, you want me to drop a bomb on that? <laughs> because, dude, people don't understand. Like they're they're worried CBD, CBD. It's like everybody relax. First of all, mm -hmm. second of all, I think the Dupont family way back in the day decided to fucking screw everybody, stop the hemp industry that would have flourished and nourished and uh, out of greed. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, they stopped the hemp and the hemp and made weed illegal. So so THC and CBD was a thing of the past, which is responsible for a lot of our aches and pains and aches and dramas and whatnot. So the new laws say, oh yeah, CBD is cool. So now we start taking CBD. That's why I think it works. That's why I think why people... Literally have back pain, take CBD, doesn't have back pain. Kids have seizures, take CBD, don't have seizures. Mm -hmm. So number one, I'm glad this it's legal now. Yeah. Because before it would be like, fuck, are you telling me that does that for that kid and you won't let that kid have it without putting their parents in jail over it? That's right. stupid. Right. It's all big propaganda. Yeah. And it's a plant. It's mm -hmm. a plant, man. Mm -hmm. Like fucking celery and rhubarb. Imagine if they said, dude, fucking lettuce is against the law now. Why? Well, because we figured out how to fucking light it on fire and put it on the back of our necks and it got us high. Mm -hmm. dude it's fucking lettuce mm -hmm. how's it illegal all of a sudden right so weed and le weed and cbd i've always said should be legal do you smoke you, weed you uh not really i mean on occasion if i if i uh if i'm at a party and i'm drunk and mm -hmm. someone peer pressures me maybe yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, really. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't do it intentionally. I usually, get, I usually get stoned at nighttime when I'm done with my day. What about what about CBD full spectrum with THC? No, uh, what's it called when there's THC free? Uh, THC free CBD. Mm-hmm. Is that is that the shit that's legal everywhere, or can you have yeah, that so point the, zero three? Well, it's point three percent. So, but there's a difference though. Cause there's multiple. Uh, I just seen you saying something the other day about some bud that you smoked, and you're like, "Fuck you! It doesn't get you high. This is gonna be the biggest shit ever." What was that? Um, CBG. CBG. Cannabid. Can, it's hard to pronounce. Cannabidrol. You got to get you high. What kind of? Got me and Kevin high. What kind of high? Unless I'm starting to wonder, like, was there a weed inside that little bong that we had? There wasn't. There wasn't, right? It okay, could. Yeah. It could have been. Dude, I was surprisingly dude, stoned. Because, dude, I knew someone one time that refused to get stoned. Refused mm. to get stoned. Said they've never smoked weed their entire life. Mm-hmm. So I gave them a hit off a fucking weed pen. Told them it was CBD. Or they wouldn't do it. <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, that's CBD right there. Yeah. There, it, was, there was CBD in it, but it was also like 87% THC with some I mean, CBD, I smoke, ABC, I, CBD. I smoke weed all the time, and uh, the high was definitely a different type of high, and it didn't last as long as a normal weed high. Dude, why don't you go get Bell Biv DeVoe mm-hmm. to partner with you, <laughs> and it could be ABC, CBD, <laughs> huh? <laughs> ABC, CBD, what, 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 what's the song? I don't know. You but know, the Bell Biv DeVoe song. I know what you're talking about. Dude, it's, it's what, it, whoever's yeah. going to win the CBD game is the motherfucker that's going to that's gonna have the coolest name and the catchiest <laughs> name. That's why CBD oil is probably going to fucking win out one of them. I try to Cause, get... Because you Google that shit. Because yeah. uh, CBD oil, it's like, you know, hey, where's that? What's that shit called? You know, CBD. Yeah, they'll type in CBD or CBD oil. Yeah. And fucking, you're already CBD oil. Yeah. Who owns CBD.com? It's funny. I try to I try to buy it, but Christian Book Distributors buy, owns it. The Christian, if you, Christian. Oh, you know who probably owns that? Who? Uh, the Green family. Oh, I don't know. They own all the Hobby Lobbies. Oh, okay. Yeah, they won't sell it. Christian Fuck Book no. Distributors. They got and so and much money, com, it's ridiculous. CBD.com forwards to Christian Book Distributors. Well, whoever owns CBD is probably got the oh, biggest sure. one, but CBD oil probably yeah. next. Yeah, but it's I think it's going to boil down to whose whose game it is. I think I can come in and compete with you right now. How build a fucking good product and, and with a cool name and a cool branding, and it, people would want to buy it. Mm-hmm. I may not be able to compete with you because I can't get it as cheap and done it. But I could fucking put a pro. I think anyone could build a product and put it out <clears> on their line. Because dude, if I if you weren't in CBD. And I had this CBD, mm-hmm. and I showed showed it to you, and it made your elbow stop hurting. Where would what would you say to me? Where do I get more of that? Yeah, and I'd say right here, bro. Bradley CBD. <laughs> and and when someone else says, "Hey, try my CBD," you'd be like, "Fuck you, dude! I got Bradley CBD." Right. Yeah. <laughs> or no, I use Bell Biv DeVoe's brand. So you like that's ABC BBD CBD. So you like the <laughs> you like the jingles. <laughs> yeah, it's part of the brand. Yeah. So CBG actually is medically better than CBD. But the thing is, CBD, it's CBD is the breakthrough of, you know, the whole cannabidiol system. And um, it always carry the torch uh, because some people are like CBG will be bigger. I'm like, no, no, it won't. It's better in in terms of medically because it uh, reaches your receptor one and two, whereas like in your body um, and repairs it. Uh, and CBD only repairs one receptor one. So medically it's, it's better, but I mean, it's not going to overpower and become greater than, um, than CBD. Do we have CBD receptors? Yes or no? Yes. That look and uh, receive CBD. Yes. So if our bodies have built in CBD receptors, it tells you that we are supposed to be getting CBD. Yes. So why so so again like why are people so nervous and worried about CBD? Because depending because not all CBD is the same. Like if you take a product and might have THC in it, it might been it might. I mean, there's no clear strict guidelines and regulations and protocols and security measures. Right, it's a wild wild west. You, a lot of products out there on the market don't actually have CBD in them. If there's a thousand milligrams on the label, maybe there's a hundred. They're lying. So people are like, oh, it doesn't work. CBD's bullshit. And like it's just a placebo. I'm like, well, what product? Take my product, and I guarantee you that it works because it does. It has know? to. Yeah. And that's what I want people to realize, dude. You have a CBD receptor in your body. That means yeah. you're supposed to be getting CBD. And if you do not give it CBD, you, sir or ma'am, mm-hmm. are malnourished. Yeah. Yes or no? Yes. Have you ever told someone that? 
I have not. You're no. going to now, aren't you? That's a good one. See? <laughs> oh, fucking Kev's going, damn, that's a good motherfucking line. <laughs> Who's that girl you cruise around with now and again? <laughs> Who? Well, the one. Raquel? Yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah, she's my she, business partner. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. She, If she heard me, she'd be fucking using that. Because she's the sales. She's the sick, slick salester, isn't she? Who who do you send people to when they come up and say, hey, Joe, how do I get a deal on? You probably go, go see these people over um, here. I don't. I I I don't. I mean, not like a lot of people do that. Nobody wants to do. Everybody's online, like, and I don't. I don't respond to them. And if I do, if I'm in a mood to respond to them, I'm like, please, because I have so many things going on, and I have fifty plus sixty employees. So I'm like, I mean, they're there for a reason, right? So I don't want to be answering DMs and answering questions. And I'm like, uh, just tell them to contact the site if they have any questions. So seven locations currently. Yeah. Open. Four open. Four open. Number five. That's hap- that's going to open up. You know where the In and Out's at on two fifteen in Eastern. Yep. We're right next to that. Um, that's number five. That opened up in a few weeks. Yeah. And then six and seven is being built. The community is being built. So the EOS shopping center is being built, and we'll be inside there. One in Centennial, and then one in Blue Diamond and Decatur. Yeah, I just saw it. It's so there's seven, right seven total. Yeah. And that's what you're waiting on. Yeah. The construction. Mm-hmm. Why are you opening there? You just like strategic. You got a map. Well, because a lot we get a lot of customers, and right now you think about where our we ha- we have one number one that we started two years ago is on Tropicana Indicator. Uh, what kind of rev it do? I'm not going to say online, but a lot. But I mean, I make millions. I mean, I'm a millionaire. So there's a know. lot of motherfuckers buying it. Yeah, but we're also doing other stuff too. So, so I, it's not I, just I, the store. Right I, I have my retail chain. I'm selling kilos of CBD. I'm consulting people that I don't talk about a lot. Like, so so it's all that doing all that. Yeah, online. I'm doing millions online. Like, yeah, I'm doing everything in retail. Mm-hmm. But it's retail's not all profit though. And B two B too. No, I mean we're the manufacturer. So everything we sell in our stores and our retail chain is we make it in our factory here in Vegas. And there's probably other products around that have that's your product with someone else's name on it. Yeah, we make we white label for people as well. And that's that's another nice. part of the business that I don't normally like talk too much about either. But you can do it. We do do it. Yeah. Yeah. And what you what do you think your number one selling product is? Um, Cloud9 syrup. Is that because you push it more? You started with it? Um, because it's it's unique. Uh, from 2016 to 2000, late 17, I was doing a half a billion impressions a month on Twitter. And, I mean, it, it got, like, really popular, like, all the – like it sounds funny, but like, cause there's 18 year olds in high school, but like from, from high school kids to like the, the lean culture, we like, we tapped into that. Like the whole promethazine and codeine double styrofoam cups with the rapper's drink, you know, that lean. I've heard of it. Yeah. So there's a culture out there. Of I've no, never leaned. Have yeah, you? No, I haven't. I've been offered and I was like, I don't, I'm I, not, I I'm heard, I heard leaning's that. dangerous. Yeah, it freezes it? it freezes your insides when you drink when you're over excessive with it, and it's meta, it's a prescription only. So the the fast story behind that is Activists, which was the largest supplier of codeine and promethazine back in 2015. TMZ comes out with a story and says that Rick Ross and Justin Bieber and Lil Wayne and all these guys made it to commercialized, and Activists is discontinuing their product. Mind you. There, we're talking you might think it's silly because you're like oh, what the hell like but there's millions upon millions of people in this culture that they created because of hip-hop hip-hop the hip-hop music industry that lean is a cool thing so when activists which was the largest supplier which was already on the street hard to get a pint of it was 800 to 1200 dollars and a pint right so not only was it hard to get because it was prescription only and it was also and it's hard it's hard to get in prescription it was also expensive. So then Activist, the largest supplier, comes out and discontinues a product with this TMZ story. So the, the the summer of 2015, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to switch the marketing from being like happy go tree hugger medical for this product. And then I went heavy and spending between sixty to $80,000 a month um, on, on, at the time, Twitter. And uh, we were like... There's a there's also a ceremony that goes with it, like pouring the bot pouring pouring the lean inside because the syrup itself you mix it with a drink, and it's colorful, so you mix it in a sprite bottle, which is a thing for the lean side. You pour it in, 
you turn the bottle upside down, you got the rap music playing in the background, right? And then you got the Jolly Ranchers, you got the double styrofoam cups, you got the ice, and then you pour it into the cup and then you drink it with the rap music. So all of our marketing was around that. And I tapped into the, so to create a culture is one thing, but to go in and in to um, try to change a culture is another. It's like extremely difficult to change a culture. And so we didn't change the culture, but we went in like a huge, this is a massive impact, and believe it or not, of millions of people. And basically we're like, this is, a, this is a healthy alternative to lean. You can still be cool. You can still play your rap music and still do Dive with Style from Cups, but now you're also helping yourself as well. Mm. What does the real lean do to you? Um, it's for coughs. So what, is it, what does it do to you? Though? <laughs> oh, it makes what? you like really slumpy and like your whole world is like slow motion. And See, but who wants that? People, people that do drugs. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't either. Is that why they call it lean? Because you just sit there yeah, and lean yeah, over? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it freezes your insides? Yeah, like little Wayne, I don't know if you're familiar, like in in the news and TMZ, like every time he has a seat, it gives you seizures as well when you're over excessive with it. It's an opiate. So when you're abusive, and also too, a lot of people are drinking lean with like Molly, like they're like, it's just, or, or sometimes the fentanyl is in a lot of things right now. So they're not, under, you know, yeah. Damn, dude. How do you get so knowledgeable on all this hogwash? <laughs> Uh, talking, I mean, like medically or the marketing side of it? Yeah, both. Um, like, med- I, like, I didn't know all that. Medically, doing a lot of research online. Um, not so much YouTube, just following, like, articles. You, you know, you ever go on the internet and you just fall into, like, this, like, vortex. You're like, how the fuck did I end up here? Mm-hmm. Right? I would just do that. Like, one, read one article and see something that someone's talk about relating to it. Then I go search that and... And then that's that's how I started Cloud Nine Syrup. So and you and didn't I hear you say somewhere that you said you did that on on your dad in your dad's garage or something? Um, I started in my dad's kitchen. Yeah, your dad's kitchen. So I I started making the product in my dad's kitchen. I I would make it. He would bottle it on the other side of the sink while I helped him fill it. And then my kids would be in the living room and and we ship it. But I was also acting as the CEO. I was acting as the the, um, I had, I was basically acting as five different people. So I was five different. So I was the, I didn't have employees at the time except for my family. So I was a CEO I was a social media manager. I was acting as the customer service girl. So I was a little bit more friendly online. Um, I was the cook. I was the, yeah. So I was doing all of this and I would have different personalities online. And then I was Brian on the phone for, as a sales guy. But you had a little loot, correct? Yeah, so I brought in some money because the whole Robin Leach ordeal, like, so the last Mayweather and Pacquiao fight that they had in Vegas, um, Robin Leach made me the, um, there was a lot of scams going on. And because of the fight didn't have hard tickets, people were saying that they had availability for the tickets. And the cheapest ticket was 8000 bucks to that fight, like in nosebleeds. So people were saying that they had access, people were paying them, and then you didn't actually get a hard ticket until the day of the fight. Did he come up to you and say, so, I'm Robin Lynch and no. I don't know why? No, I, I kept breaking stories of like nightclubs. I shut down a nightclub downtown um, when I was running my blog. Um, I kept breaking stories and they noticed that I had my foot in the door with like, like they weren't breaking the story. So they basically piggybacked it off me. And that's how I met Robin because he approached me and was like, like uh, when Hooray at Palms shut down, that I, I broke that story. When, um, do you think he has anything to do with you having champagne dreams and Pacquiao no, wishes? No. Yeah, because he, he made me a lot of money. So with the Pacquiao and, and Mayweather fight, because of the scams that are going on, he basically made me the poster child to say, I, I had a site called instavegas.com, and that was the concierge business. And um, he basically made me, he made me the poster child to the world and said, all these scams are going on, but here's this one guy, Joe Vargas at InstaVegas.com that has real tickets. So I, he made me about 3 million bucks. Nice. Yeah. So, um, and that's what you took to start your CBD stuff. Yeah. But then I sold my party bus, the guy that I sold my half of my party, cause he was a partner in my party bus. I, I sold my half of my party bus and brought the bus to Newport beach in January, 2015. And that's when he, he introduced me to the CBD. So I ended up selling my party bus, shut down my business, changed my number, got out of the industry, and um, yeah, 
that was do you still do you still see people find you and say what's up dog i need to get in someplace no 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 <laughs> I need, I need Every, pack a house. no everybody knows that i'm the cbd guy now so yeah but dude you also could use your old skills like again what's uh what's his name chris delgado yeah he, he supposedly can pack a house yeah can you pack a house what for an event yeah um yeah i mean i i that's not that's not really like I what know, i but, focus but, on though but, but dude i'm telling you like i have hundreds of customers mm -hmm. all of them are like gurus and subject matter <laughs> experts and authors and you know i have some sales experts that can't sell their own fucking virtual training right oh, okay they're 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 sales experts mm -hmm. but they're not selling their own and i'm right, like right. well i took a look at it because it's like if they're on my system that's gonna make me look bad yeah so i'm like well, what's going on here and it boils down to one thing every fucking time marketing mm -hmm. like you can have a vt system do you, you even know what one of those are yeah it's not, it's not you, you it, tried selling me on the program oh i, told I didn't you try no. selling you you'd be closed your no. ass would be closed <laughs> Let's be, I mean, let's be real. You did sell me. I, I might I've been have brought here, it up. I've been I bring here it up all, to everybody 20 times a day, but I didn't try selling you or you'd be closed. You, you, uh, you FaceTime what Chase, remember in the conference room? Chase. Hero. Oh, Hero. Yeah. 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 What, or what, was what, it Cole or Chase? No, it was, what, it was one of those two. But what about him? I, I'm saying I was here when you were trying to pitch me on doing my own thing. No, I, you mean I brought it up. You pitched me on it, yeah, and try, but and I, I didn't. And but I didn't try to close you because I'll close <laughs> your ass. It's it, dude, it's a no brainer. Like I could show you how to make so much more money than you're making now just by leverage and light speed. You I can't know, do it. You, you can't do it with Kajabi. I know it ain't a course. It's not one of those things you think it is, like everybody else in the world does. It's like you would use an interactive video to make more money than you're making now. Here's how it works. Like if you do, you drive people to see a video or no? No. You don't. You don't have like if I order your cbd you don't show me any videos you don't do anything no okay so it's like buying on amazon you don't get a video on amazon exactly so number one you're gonna be a you don't have bit to different. you don't have to i mean go ahead because your podcast i no, want no, your viewers no no no. i want you to, to understand me, i ain't selling you again dude that's what i'm saying i ain't selling you yet if, if you want no, me he, to sell you i gotta tell you everything it's okay, gonna do just because i've known you for a lot longer now at that time i didn't really know you that well um i I, I want you to refresh my memory and I also want your viewers and, and your, your, no, I'm serious because the biggest thing I've heard all the, all this time I've known you now, which is many months is, is like, yeah, it's too expensive because you want 20% of all my revenue. That's not true though. See, people don't get it. So that's what I'm saying. So go ahead and reiterate it. So that way I'm not only myself, go ahead. And well, we'll do it later offline. I'm going to tell oh, you okay. my CBD deal too. Okay. But I'm just saying, I didn't try to close you. You'd be closed okay. because anyone that I try to close, I mm -hmm. close. The, Tony Robbins took me seven years, but I closed his ass. Mm -hmm. um, I just need to see like a bigger, obvious use case. And like, again, you do CBD. There's not a big use case there. Mm -hmm. You could create a course and go out and make a bunch of money with it. Well, but, but that, Hemp Academy is what we were going to do with it. Yeah, but that's not really the big play. The, mm -hmm. the bigger play would be cbd consumers you yeah. know if you're selling millions of millions of cbds who are you selling them to if the like, world if you're like people yeah okay well sure. good people need to understand about cbd and right. maybe refer others and whatnot mm -hmm. so it it, it 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 makes an impact like cole yeah you, you know cole uh, hatter and chase yeah of course so like cole he's getting he's jumping on chase i think it will eventually uh, do something but that's courses, you know, like Grant has courses. Yeah. Damon has courses. Yeah. Hemp Academies, I'm sure, is a course. Teach how to build what? But since we're being, I'm not trying to like throw you under the bus or anything like Dare that. Dare you to try. I love it. But I you want to be you authentic want, you, and pure. You wanted $50,000 and fucking 20%. And I said no. No, I needed $50,000 to produce your content. Well, that was a consulting fee. No, it was not. Yeah, that's what it was. Dude, you're, you're full of shit. No, you're, I'm you're definitely full of not full of you're shit. You're full of shit if you think I charged you 50 grand. I sell a 50 grand package, right. which is to produce 10, and a, 10 hours plus of interactive courseware. Right. Do all the well, work for to you. Show us how, to basically show us how, how to do it. I'll also show you, but I'm not going to show you if you ain't fucking doing it here, right. obviously. Right, right, right. So 50 grand is not consulting. 50 grand is production. Like, this shit ain't free. Mm -hmm. You know, these people filming and editing and graphic artists and motion graphics making your courseware that costs fucking money right right so you get 10 plus hours of that you get a bunch of shit for 50 grand is my point mm -hmm. but but that's just to make a course but what you missed out of all that and most people do is if you send someone to a video that asks no questions collects no data makes no offers 
you're 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 leaving money on the table. Mm-hmm. You understand? Yeah, no, of course. So if I send you to a video, whether I call it a hemp academy or I call it fucking sales training or I call it fucking you know whatever your whatever the video is, right? If that video cannot ask questions, adapt its content, and make upsells and offers in real time, mm-hmm. then you wasted my eyeballs. Right. Because you just showed me a 30 minute, 40 minute, two hour course, didn't ask me any questions, mm-hmm. and didn't sell me anything else. So, what do most people have to do? They got to go remarket to me after I went through that. Hey, what'd you think? What'd you like? Because they don't have interactive content. But have you ever thought about, have you ever thought about charging a monthly, like a smaller monthly fee and like the, whatever percent that you and the person decide on and doing a smaller monthly fee than one big rip of 50,000 dude you can sign up for the platform right now for zero out of your pocket Mm -hmm. it's zero right yeah there was another go ahead and say that because there was another well the platform there's a couple options the platform is free yeah it's zero you spin one up and you use it i will take either two dollars two dollars there you go yeah or 20 percent rev share and people say well what do I get for that 20%? Well, dude, you get 80%. <laughs> but that's what you get. So Obviously. I know, but but if I, for example, show you how to make 3 million where yeah. you only would have made a million, right. then you're going to give me 600,000 out of 3 million or you're going to get 100% of a million. Which do you prefer? Right, no. I so get, pe- I get it. people are just like, they're limited. They, they don't realize I'll make them more because they don't stop and say, why would I make more by going with you? Right. Because if I just took 20%, for nothing, mm-hmm. why the fuck would anyone do it? Right. You think Tony Robbins is stupid? Grant Cardone stupid? Damon John stupid? PGA stupid? All these General Motors is stupid. All these people are just stupid. No, dude. No, I think the people I sold buy, them. I, think I the closed them. People buy into people like Grant Cardone are stupid. I know, but like my, he's a manipulating like scienti- Scientology. Like it's all bullshit. Well, yeah, hey, he's a great. There's all these types. Great out here. speaker. There's all there's all these types. <laughs> Dude, Grant Grant's helped a lot of folks, and I'm sure a lot of folks uh, I know it's your friend, can't, I know. can't stomach him. I don't have nothing personal. I, I just don't. The idea it's not him that I, I don't dis, I don't dislike him. I just don't this. I don't. I don't. I don't like this. The strategy of like the manipulation and Scientology and like now, now people are gonna tag Grant. Oh, they will in, in this. Oh, I'm sure now. Now that you're saying that, well, I mean, okay, but I like Grant as a person. I don't like. I don't like his strategy. <laughs> Is dude, that fair to say? Hey, like yeah. I don't, dude. I don't. You're like me, dude. You you just say what you think. That's, yeah. That's what that's what keeps me, I think, uh, happy. Mm. It's because if someone doesn't like what I say, fuck. Yeah. I apologize. I don't want to offend anybody. But if someone right. doesn't like what I say, um, they they have a problem because, dude, I don't really I don't really fuck with nobody. Do you? I don't no, hear you no, messing with nobody. No. I hear you. I hear you chiming in on people like, uh, "Hey, you guys are fucking with those guys," but you're always on the justice side of things. Yeah, like you're trying yeah. to. You're trying to. I try to spread like I try to like my audience like on the hustler Instagram. I, I try to not be the 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 bullshit police like because it's like a lot of energy and I don't try to dime people out all the time like and say specific like there's persons that scam because people are always in my DMs saying you're being vague. Tell us who's real and who's not so we can save our money. And cause I'm always like courses are bullshit and like not all courses, but so, uh, dude, listen, a lot of, a lot are, of courses a lot of are bullshit. Are, yeah. But people want to know. And I'm like, I'm not going to tell you like it's, it, it was no one told, no one's ever told me shit. Like I did my due diligence and paid attention. And like, I, I watch habits of people. And well, you know how you can tell, I'll tell everybody listening. If you want to know if a course is real or not real, you, buy the motherfucker, mm-hmm. go through it, and then apply it, and then make a judgment. Because if you listen to other people, dude, I've seen courses work for people and not other people, and then you really get down into it, and it's because yeah. the person that didn't work for it didn't fucking apply anything. Right. And so now everybody's saying, oh, it doesn't work, look. Well, dude, you can't look. The only time you know for sure is when you do it yourself. Right. That's for sure, for sure. Or ask someone you trust hey have you went through this course if you like i'd never talk shit about hemp academy until i went until i went through it and if i went through it and didn't fucking do anything you told me to do and started talking shit what would you say well before that before even saying that though like if i didn't if i wasn't in the cbd industry and had a successful business but i had a hemp academy wouldn't you look at it differently not if you not if you why make not if not if it's fact like in other words I can teach you how to, um, I can teach you how to fucking grow marijuana by going and getting a marijuana expert. Why? Because you watched a bunch of Google videos. No, because I went and hired a marijuana expert to teach you, and then now no, you're gonna to teach you. 
No, I know, but like people that are, especially your audience, people that are like you're telling them to go out and buy a bunch of courses, and if it doesn't work, then it's not real. Like, okay, let's not make them waste their money. Well, how do you know if they're real though? Because okay, for like Brett Knutson is on my second podcast for Confessions of a Hustler that'll yep. be out next week. Um, he made a good point in the podcast yesterday. He was like, think about he think about the people because I was like. What's your opinion on on people that selling courses and how do people watch out for it? And how do they know? And he was like, his point was, does the has the does the person or has the person ever ran a successful business in what they're teaching? Like if they haven't, then don't buy the course. Then they're full of shit. Because then they may they may have read a course and be like, well, this is easy to teach. We can just fucking charge eighty nine dollars a month and teach this ourselves. That's bullshit. But does it work? Is the question. Cause like if I if I learn from you how yeah. to, how to go build a hemp business, yeah, will it work? Yeah, hundred percent. Because because you I built a hemp. Did it. Okay, yeah. so now if I learn from you to do it, and then I go make my own course based on what you taught me, I didn't build a big hemp business. My course would be shit all of a sudden. Yeah, because you have to actually. Do I'm, it. I'm telling them exactly what you would have told you just, them. So you're basically reading me a book. <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> and matter. Charge me a month. Well, it doesn't matter. You know what's funny is I know gurus that do that, dude. That's fucked up. Dude, to me, I know, that's fucked I up. I know a guru that will charge you fucking ten thousand dollars, and that motherfucker reads you a book. Who is it? You want his name? Yes. <laughs> no one will believe it. Who? Bob Proctor. Oh, really? One he's of the huge. grand <laughs> yeah, grandfathers fucking... in the industry. Right. I know a dude paid him ten thousand fucking dollars, and every week he read him a book. <laughs> that he, wasn't he, his. He. Fuck no, it wasn't his. He was teaching things. There's that a he... book that little that, that, that nobody knows about. Very few people know <clears throat> about it, mm-hmm. and that's the book he read. And it, it, it literally started the whole book, Think and Grow Rich, it was yeah. before that book. Oh wow! Yeah, and it's and it's public domain too. Mm-hmm. So you go get that book and, and and read it and write it exact word for word and put fucking hustlers science of getting rich. Yeah, it, you can fucking do that. And by the way, just record Think and Grow Rich is public domain. Right. You know that. No. Yeah, you can go fucking take Think Grow Rich, put your name on it, and they can't do a fucking thing about it. Mm. Public domain, that book is. Yeah. So Bob Proctor didn't do anything wrong, and quite frankly, the book works. Yeah. Think and Grow Rich works, mm-hmm. doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I'd, well, some people say it will, and some people say it won't. It's go very ask, popular. I mean, it's number one seller of fucking I know, but go, like, go ask people about Think and Grow Rich. Some people say you're full of shit, and some people will say, fuck yeah, that shit works. Right. So that's what well, I'm saying is you say, never people know. People say that about the four-hour work week book, too, or like building uh, trust agents. Have you, ever, have you ever read Trust Agents by Chris Brogan? Do you should. It's a, no, it's, but, a, it's how to build online influence and build tribes. It's fucking well, the most amazing. Book. I do. I do want to learn that. But yeah. see, like I can teach sales and 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 closing because mm-hmm. they're strategies, they're techniques. I, yeah. I've done it for life and and it works. Right. I don't have a big sales business. Mm-hmm. So although I understand that could be an indicator, I don't think it's that's how you tell if it's a good course or bad course. Because if I studied you studied you i didn't yeah. build anything right and then fucking turn around and regurgitated everything you taught me it would still be correct yeah i don't know no it's, it's based on that practice. what what i didn't say it was it was a fucking uh what do you call moral? it moral moral practice <laughs> i'm just saying that there's people out there with a course that may be totally legitimate course that yeah. they didn't build a business with mm. but they but they sell it like right now there's um grant cardone licensed uh trainers Okay. They're just out selling Grant Cardone's training. Right. <laughs> For, they, they, so, so, it, so, so it's basically Grant's course. It works. This guy's just selling it. He's never built a big sales business. You know what I'm saying? Do you, do you support his practices? Whose? Grant's. I don't know what his practices are. I know Grant from Yes, a, you do. And, you and by the way, we're well. not... And you know, you know, lately we're not the best of friends anymore for yeah, a while. Yeah, no, you told me, yeah. Yeah, so so I'm not defending Grant, but no, Grant has went into companies, trained them some basic, you know, sales shit, and yeah. the company doubled, tripled its revenues. Right, yeah. And I there's mean, and there's salespeople that didn't know how to sell a fucking thing, and they went mm-hmm. to Cardone University, and now they're fucking making great money and, and right. supplying for their family. So yeah, he helps enough. a lot of people in a lot of ways. Is I don't agree with all his viewpoints yeah. and all his... Um, uh, ways of doing things. Yeah, yeah. But same, but, same here. Yeah, but like, but dude, he's good at what he does, which is marketing. 
He didn't get rich selling. He he's, got rich he's buying. Mark, he, dude, he's mark, there you go. You said it. It's what? like Jordan Belfort called it out. Like he's good at marketing. Yeah, he's good at marketing. So, <laughs> so, and, and, but, but the sales shit, like follow up, like yeah. when you teach your people to follow up, mm-hmm. so does he. It works. Follow up, dude. Hey, if someone said no, don't take no for an answer. Follow yeah. up. Yeah. Here's a good couple good ways to follow up. Right. Following up is fucking. He didn't invent following up, yeah. but he teaches to follow up, mm-hmm. and that's why fucking people get an increase. You know what I mean? Yeah. But no, I'm not against course people, dude, which I sense you are kind of. No, no, um, no. It just depends on who. The, so I think a lot of them are. I think a lot of them are. I just don't. I just don't know a lot of them. All I, the ones I know are on my platform only, and they're none of them are full of shit. What I don't like. Okay, so okay, for example, like Damon John, he's on your program. He, he, he has. But a, he's not fucking using his flashy lifestyle to sell a course that's what i the practice is i'm not saying i don't think courses are full of shit i have an 86 page course for hemp academy like it's fucking a lot of great information in there right is that how to is that how to build a a retail location no no that the one that one specifically is basically like a a 101 like a mastering cbd 101 so it like breaks down the hemp industry and like what is cbd what's cannabis what's different stuff like that um, gives you recipes and stuff like that. So it's like, it's a free course that I give out. Um, it's like an introductory to like certain things that I do. Um, but like, yeah, I don't, I don't have a hemp Academy. Isn't even like a full operational Academy yet between launching CBD oil.com, uh, launching, I, I for some reason my, in my hustle mind, I was like, wow, it'd be a great idea to fucking launch CBD oil.com. And at the same time, fucking open up two stores at the same time and do it. Like, I was fucking, I'm an idiot. Is it a lot of, a lot of work to do? Oh, dude, I, I was, um, yeah, mentally I was fucking overwhelmed. And so and this is September of this year. Like, I was like, August, I made the decision on opening two stores at the same time. And then doing CBDOil.com, I launched September 4th. And then, you know, and then I have all these other ideas. Like, I just launched, finally, Confessions of a Hustler um, podcast. And I have, I still haven't done hemp Academy. It's like, you know, that I'm not afraid to admit it. Like I have ideas and I think that I'm able to imp- implement them, but then I'm sometimes I'm not mindful of my time. Right. Cause then I still have someone that I'm dating. Then I still have my children that like, I need to make sure that I'm mindful of them all the time. My son lives in California. He's in finish up. He's finishing off high school out there and move, he's, he'll move with me when he gets done. But I have to be mindful of him all the time. Like, you have a mental capacity, dude. Like I, I fucking, in my mind, I'm like, I can do this. I'm a fucking hustler. And it was fucking hard, man. Like I didn't talk, I don't talk about it like on Instagram, like, you know, but it was tough for sure. So hemp Academy is still in the works. Because what what of, will that do? Cause, cause if you're going to build, if you're going to make a course, the goal is to have an end result. So like, for example, if you take my course, mm-hmm. you'll be X. So if I go through hemp Academy, what is it going to teach well, me? You'll learn, you'll learn the industry. You'll learn how to, like, there'll be different things, right? So, like, one, or like, how to get your own retail store. Like, what to look for. You got to, you know, I can drop a couple things here. Like, you know, things that I didn't, all the things that I've learned, like, through the process, like, is what I want to teach. And um, I don't want to do it for free, you know? So, um, but, 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 like, if I'm listening and I'm watching, you know you, what I want to see? I want to see how do I do what you do? How do I go open that store? So Hemp Academy to me. Yeah, but that's just one thing though. It's I know, like, but, but let but, me click this. Let me click A because I want to know the retail store. Which is a, which is a class inside Hemp Academy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then you have sections. It'll be subcategories. Like I want to be a grower and this is what you do. And I want to be an extractor, like depending on what you want to do in the industry, right? So it'll be like chapters. like, And I'm sure you can see it in your mind of like how your um, VT works. But um and so, like, if you want to open up a retail store, like, I okay, well, you need to find M Zone in your city. M Zone, Mary, M Zone um, is for manufacturing, and there's certain sections in the city you're not allowed to have manufacturing. So you got to go out and find. I didn't know that, right? It teach people something. Some of this stuff is simple, but it's like stuff that I didn't know myself. Mm-hmm. Um, then you have to find the proper, uh, not only just the proper facility, but in, like. Uh, in terms of space, like, what are you going to do in the space? Um, you know, and there's like, and then how do you open up your, now we're talking about factory and then the, the, I'm, I'm referring to the factory. I'm only saying that because I manufacture our products. Right. But if you only want to do retail, then the section would talk about like, 
what locations in the in the city, like in your demographic, what you want to look for, and then how do you market that? How do you open it? How much money does it cost to open it? Like, what do you do? What's the what's the SOPs to open your store? Um, you know, staff. How do you find the right staff? What do you teach your staff? All that stuff. Yeah, but or or here here's an upgrade. Click on this button, and I'll teach your staff. Right. See, that's right, a, right. that's a training system. Right. See, and that's what these course people, these course hawkers, they, they're not hawking a system. They're hawking a video. Yeah. And that's the difference. Right. And I think just like CBD came on the scene, interactivity mm. will be more prevalent, I would bet, in three years. Right. Websites will be interactive mm-hmm. where when you come to someone's website, based on who you are, what you want, where you go, we'll, we'll, you'll, you'll hear a different message than something else but you, you people have buying styles as well yeah anyway dude you said you had to bounce at three so i don't want to keep you here too long and you're local so if i need you back for another episode you, yeah will you come back and do another episode only if you do confessions of a hustler i'll do confessions of a hustler <laughs> dude i'm I, I would consider myself a hustler so so you know i'll confess <laughs> we got um, a priest waiting for you and everything huh so we got a priest waiting for all you right. and everything all right well folks if you guys aren't following Joe already, go follow him at Hustler on Instagram, at Joe Vargas LV on Facebook, and then just Google him. Don't really go to my, that's my personal Facebook, like my family and friends. Just go to at Hustler on Instagram. Do you you just mainly do Instagram? Mainly, and then uh, Casey Adams, you know, Casey from Bill Jr. Empire. He's he's getting me on TikTok, um, at Hustler on TikTok, which is going to be the next, I think, big thing. Yeah. I don't think it's a little addicting, dude. I start watching it. it. And yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. Have you have like, you done it though? Have you? I haven't made my first video yet. I have an account, but I was told by someone who's really good at it, mm-hmm. do not just post a video to post a video. He said, be very strategic as to what kind of content you want to do, and then learn w- what the real shit is there. And he said it'll you'll blow up quick, quick, quick. But you you watch the videos though. TikTok to me is kind of like it's very hard to get used to. And far as old. Yeah, yeah, I guess. A lot of them see ten year olds. Like sometimes I'm, I'm, you just I'm scrolling to... and I see a like a cute, what looks like a eighteen year old say, "Yeah, if you're over thirty, keep scrolling. This ain't for you. I'll wait." <laughs> and then of course, you know, I'm thinking, if you're over thirty, keep scrolling. Like there's nobody on this fucking thing. Every thirty, everything, <laughs> like everybody's every, fifteen. Everything is like an act. Like everything is like theatric on that. That's. And then, like, people like me and you, like, I saw, do you see Jordan Belfort try to do this TikTok? And he was, like, dancing, like, to the fucking, like. No. No? It's because. I don't, I don't, I don't, I didn't look up anybody. See on there? No. He posted on Instagram because he got into TikTok. And, but the thing, that he had, like, young teenagers that were helping him do. But he was, like, it's just, you, you have to do things that we're not used to doing. I'm not it's doing. It's very theatric. I know, but I'm not doing that. You have to like. You know what they're trying to get you to do? What? Make pe- is, is the goal make people watch you? Yeah. Because because like if you see Jordan going. <laughs> no, he was doing. Who, who, uh, who cares? Like he was I'm just doing gonna some keep like, scrolling. He was doing some random dance. It's just it's entertainment. But, but it's the one like, the ones that are like clever are the ones that go. Oh my god, I think this person's gonna freak. And you're, and you're like creeping through a hallway and it makes you just fucking watch. Yeah. And then you get to the end of the fucking hallway, nothing fucking happened and it starts <laughs> over and you're like, you motherfucker. Oh yeah. yeah Next. Yeah. yeah. So it's almost like creative. But if someone told me the goal is to get someone to watch the whole thing and then get them to subscribe mm-hmm. and then get them to share or whatever your, your thing is, then I could figure out what angle. Cause it's the same thing with podcasting. Same thing with fucking everything else too. It's it's figure out what your message is and mm-hmm. then fucking own the message. And, yeah. and that's why I haven't made a video because I don't want to get on TikTok and be like, you know, play one of them songs. You see people going, I want to hang or that one that goes bibbity bibbity bop. Or <laughs> <laughs> you see that one? No. Where basically they come out all fucked up with no makeup and ugly and shit and like three girls come out and then I forget what song it is on Disneyland where it's bibbity bibbity bop. And then yeah. when they do that, now all of a sudden it looks like they're going out to fucking prevay. Oh, okay. They go from nothing to glamorous in, in an instant. Yeah. I'm not doing any of that shit. I, I do want to point out to your audience though too is that if they can always contact me. I do I shouldn't say I never look at my DMs um unless they're like people that I know. I do Or bra- they got blue I, check marks. I do yeah, that's for sure. That's what the the incentive of having blue check mark. I know. I just discovered that the other day. Listen, my my life on social media 
is 1,000% different today than it was one year ago before I had Hustler and a blue check mark. Really? 1,000%, dude. How do you leverage it? Dude, how do you think mark? I have all these, like, I'm talking to fucking all these celebrities, like, a lot of, I wouldn't say 100%, but a lot of my relationships now is because of Instagram. Blue check mark? Because fucking, why am I, why is this, like, A-list artist and celebrity fucking talking to me because my my message now went into his inbox the one that he pays attention to or she pays attention to right because you just have check to, marks go in there yeah yeah and people take it more serious they're like okay cool like a lot of people talk shit about like blue i think the people talking shit about blue check marks are the ones that don't have blue check dude marks. everybody i know wants a blue fucking check mark yeah 100 percent. everybody i know including influencers that are not verified but have people called me and said how the fuck did you get that check mark? I'll pay you 10 grand. And I'm like, I didn't pay for a check mark. I don't know how to get a fucking check mark. Mm. I would have paid for a check mark. I didn't pay for a check mark. One day I woke up and someone said, Congratulations. And I said, How? Why? And they said, You got a fucking blue check mark. I ran to fucking Twitter, which I don't have one. And I'm like, No, I don't. Yes, it is. And they sent me a screenshot. I'm like, Oh, fucking Instagram. Run over to Instagram. Bang, daddy's verified. Yeah, but that. But, now, I don't know why. I don't know if I, I believe it. that. It's the fucking truth. I don't believe it. Dude, I'll bet you a million dollars. That's the truth. Because I, I didn't, I didn't fucking. I'm not saying you paid for it. I'm not implying that you did. I, I don't even know but how here's, I got it. Here's the thing, though. Like, mo, okay, most, maybe you're just one of the few that, that's not like this. People that talk shit about, like, people, like, not everybody with a blue check mark, but to get a blue check mark, you have to have media about yourself, right? But majority of the time, the people like, I'm not going to, I didn't just, I'm not going to say that I, I I didn't wake up one day and got it. I took the media that, that is, uh, there's tons of media about me <coughs> and I've used that. It took me like a year, like um, less than a year to get verified because I've tried before. I'm like, I just submitted my, my media. I tried doing it the right way with, or the direct way because you can do it inside your settings on your on That's your what I did once. Okay. That's probably, I applied. got lucky then. Yeah, that's because all that I doesn't did. happen. But, but it didn't happen for like a year. The thing, with well, the thing for me is that I somebody that I know that that has a relationship with Facebook, and I said, "Here's all my media. Can you help me get this in front of the person that I don't know how I even know how it happens? Is someone sitting in a room like this and hits a button and it's like, you know what I mean? Like, how, what's the process? There's like two people. Is it like a like a, a nuke button where like two people have to like enter their code in to like allow that to be approved. I don't know. But all I did was around the time that I got um, verified be- little, a couple weeks before that, there was a media article that came out. It was like how I became a multimillionaire and the local news station basically did like a story about my, my story about how I came up and stuff like that. And in the headline, it was about me because I also, you know, fake Melania, the conspiracy fake Melania, how she has a body double. You never, come on, dude. Dude, I'm not in with the memes. And, oh, okay. and the, no, it's I, not a meme. Like the whole, dude, the whole world. Like, what, what's talked fake about Melania? It. How well, Melania Trump has a body double. I just figured out double. who the little alien thing is. R- little Ray or whatever. I don't know who that is. See? I, I'm fucking behind. No, I'm been like, dude, every... The White House, every media in the whole world. It says there's a fake Melania? Yeah. She well, has there a, probably she, she is has a body for double. safety. I know, but I started that conspiracy. Oh, like, does she? No, no, like legitimately, she does. But I, I, I'm my shit, I was, I was on Ellen DeGeneres. Like she made a skit about me and like about this whole fucking conspiracy on her show. The, the White House correspondent, Katie Bennett, went on HLN fucking to, and they were talking about me, how like my fucking conspiracy was bullshit. The whole world. I mean, I'm surprised you haven't heard about it. The fake, whole world talked fake about Melania? it. Yeah. It, there's no, let me tell you, you couldn't pay for the PR that I got. How'd you get it? Um, I was stoned in bed one day watching a YouTube video and I saw fucking Trump talking in this a press conference. And the, um, pull it up, Kevin. I want to see that. The camera guy zooms in on her face. Because he knew himself, it wasn't her. And you're like, that ain't fucking Melania, right? So I. Tweet. But it looks. It's supposed to be. Yeah, it's supposed to be. Because he even says like, my wife Melania Trump that's standing right here next to me, which is exactly what he said. And he's what like, what an idiot, See, trying to get t- people to yeah. like fucking believe what he was being seen. And um, I tweeted about it. And next morning, my social media manager was like, dude, your fucking tweet is blowing up. 
And it was like, I watched it, it was like 6,000, 7,000, finally like 130,000. And, um, and then it just fucking spread like wildfire. But because the, the video is so believable, uh, what is it? What is that? And um, so, I mean, it's, you look at it, it's it's like, you know, it's, even a camera guy zoomed in on her face. To are, fucking, you, are you big on Twitter? Um, they suspended my account. I had the Secret Service coming to my house because of this. Over like, the that's, I'm, so, I'm so surprised that, yeah, they told me I need to fucking chill out. Because I hired a publicist. Like, I was like, dude, it got so big, dude. I, I'm surprised you didn't hear about this. Did you this. make any money off of it? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, other she, than just she displayed my company logo. She made fun of me and my company. She was like, "His name is BilegalMeds.com, so he's he's probably trustworthy." Or making a joke about it. Alan, Ellen, Ellen DeGeneres on her show. Yeah, God damn, like the dude. segment was about me. That was me. a fucking lucky break. Yeah, yeah, it was. So I don't even know why all, I started talking. And it was about all that. from a tweet. Yeah, all from a stone in bed watching YouTube, and I was like, "Hold on," I was like, "That's not that's not Melania." I said something like, "That's not Melania." Um, I wonder what else what else is a lie. Huh. Yeah, are you a Trump fan or no? No, I fucking hate him. You why? Because I think he's a piece of shit. Because he lies? I just think he's a piece of shit. Who would you have voted for if you could? Um between him and Hillary. I don't like either of them, to be honest with you. But at the same time, like I'm not deep into politics where I'm like that that's a hard decision. Like I think Hillary is fucking crooked as fuck. That's the, right? only re- that's the only reason I was happy for Trump is because guess what? Hillary's a politician, but and, like, and it's old school, same as usual, and Trump was the only one that might go in there and start breaking up the old boy network, getting rid of the backroom deals, yeah. and, and, and rooting out the fucking frauds to right. at least you know enrich himself, yeah. if nothing else. Yeah. But you know who knows? I, what, what, what bothers me is, is the media. Why? Because, dude, if everyone told the fucking truth, I could form a, 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 my own opinion. But I don't know if he's doing good or if he's doing bad well, that's or if the problem. I hate him or if I love that's him. That's the problem with Obama. Everybody likes Obama, right? He's, like, he's like a Will Smith. Like Everybody yep. fucking likes Will Smith. Yep. Like He's just a good person. He's fun. <laughs> and he's a great speaker. That's right. But then fucking Obama that I voted for, I'm a vet that has fucking medical coverage, and they took away my fucking medical coverage because they said I make too much money because of Obamacare. So it's like, here I am voting because I like a person, and then they're fucking me over, like on their poli- like on their politics and supporting. And I don't think I really knew enough about Obamacare to like know I shouldn't support it. But yeah, where should people listening go support you at Hustler? Buy legal meds and CBDoil dot com. Yeah. What buy- if they want to get in on this uh, crowdfunding you're gonna do? Yeah, so that's an interesting process as in itself. You ever done crowdfunding before? So we're doing a Reg CF crowdfunding, and the SEC is involved. So, dude, I've even getting, I'm even because my my content is like blowing shit up and like millions of dollars of money fucking on my bed, and like oh, yeah. I'm kind of like you know. But by the way, you guys look like you that dude blew up, which was, oh, which, yeah. which, 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 which was <laughs> fucking great. I mean, the first thing I see it and like, bam, and my wife goes, "Oh my god!" I go, "Babe, <laughs> the, the motherfucker didn't blow up." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never fell for it in a minute, but it did look cool and it did look like he yeah, did. Yeah. So I went, I, I commented, laugh, laugh, That's laugh. It. Dude, I got a bunch of fucking people hating on me because they're like, what are you, what's wrong with you? Oh, Somebody yeah. died. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. dude, no well, one, the fact nobody that, died. The fact that Instagram made it a sensitive content and played it, into, played, it, played it more into like the idea that it was real. Huge. It, dude, it was pretty good. Who, who edited that? Um, Tiger. Because all, all, all you did is, he walked out, put that thing down. Then, then you guys <laughs> shot it, and then you just spliced the boom together. They sent it to me. I, they did it themselves. I took Tiger, m- myself, and Tiger took our team out to go shooting. And, and if you if you wanted to make more people believe it, it you, they sh- you you guys should have uh, edited the laughs into screams. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if they would have edited the, a voiceover going, "Oh my fucking god!" Yeah, dude, yeah everyone yeah. would have thought that dude just got his ass blown. But I kind of like the. That it was like borderline, like yeah. wasn't real, but it, no, some perfect. people knew it wasn't, but perfect. other people did. Yeah, but perfect. That's perfect. That way, hey, guys, look, we're laughing. Yeah. Obviously, it's a joke. But on my crowdfunding uh, for, because I'm raising a million dollars for CBDOL.com, and I'm including, I'm, I'm not doing a private raise. I want to do, I think it's funner to, to, to have the public involved. And I'm not, have, I'm not really giving up a lot to do that. So um, I got a 30 day cooling period fucking email from the people helping me with it. They're like, dude, you gotta, you gotta calm down with your content on Instagram. 
and uh because the sec is involved and so i don't fuck around yeah and then i started out the company with as an llc and then i had to do a switch over to a corporation inc why uh because when you're crowdfunding and the sec is involved that's just better um so now but the problem with that is now i have to go get a separate bank account and that and getting a cbd cbd banking um, that I ha- I have a hemp academy close friends program. I charge people a thousand bucks, and like I get them CBD banking and merchant processing because that's hard to do online, and I b- drop a bunch of information as well. But it's lifetime access. Um, but the crowdfunding thing, like, so now I have to wait another six to eight weeks to do the paperwork and go through the motions of getting a new bank account for for the new corporation. So um, I don't have a specific date, you know, but within the next now until i'm praying to god 60 days we'll basically go out and raise a million bucks and giving away pieces of there's incentives you know there's like 250 bucks is the minimum that you can that you can uh buy in at and it's like being public but not being public Hmm. you know you're kind of you're doing you're raising money and getting people a stake of a business and um they're non-accredited investors so it's interesting folks go Follow <clears throat> at Hustler. Keep an eye on it if you want to get in on that deal. Otherwise, go out and share this out there. Make sure you hashtag everybody who's mentioned so we can get some fucking virality going. Some, I mean, I don't really like drama, but it, <laughs> it, I'd love to see like a million people share it. Just to, you know, like I love it when like people tag me in someone else's yeah, thing. Yeah. It, it means that like they want me to see what they po- put. There's a guy out there like the fake Brad Lee, believe it or not. Oh, yeah. Who's funny as shit, and um, now I know who he is. Yeah, and everyone thought it was me because it's pretty clever. Mm-hmm. Which is I'm the real Bradley. Right. Which is, there's a reason for that, but he he made the fake Bradley, mm-hmm. and uh, dude, it's just fucking awesome. The fake Bradley account, go look at it. But I like it when people tag me in that shit because then we can see. Right. So if I were to tag at hustler now mm-hmm. you can see you can share right. correct yep so folks controversy sells too you, by the way yeah you want you want this shit out in the world and you and you want to support hustler joe vargas go out there and share and tag and rate this bitch and until then appreciate you coming and if you in. want to be a part of the cbd industry and maybe there's something i didn't talk about like come talk to me and shoot me a dm and say that you heard me on bradley's podcast and if I can't help directly, I, I always try to, if I see that the message is about CBD, like I always direct them to somebody I don't necessarily take care of it myself, but I, you know, yeah. And if you've been listening this long, cause this minute, it's an hour 32. Most of them are not this long. Oh, okay. If you've been listening this long dog, just go at hustler his ass and it, hit him a hashtag bomb squad. So that, so he knows, you know, someone was listening. <laughs> Thanks for having me, man. Till next time. Keep it real.